Yep.
Good morning. I just wanted to um, give a couple of words about our prelude before we do that. A few years ago, Steve went to a uh, walk to Emmaus, and this was the theme song, and it comes from today's psalm, Psalm 19. So when that comes up in the service, you'll connect this song with that. And the verse that, uh, verse 14, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So here we have that song for you today. Good morning, 
everyone. How's everybody doing this morning? So I know the first thing that's on your mind is probably thinking about that little white Camry that's out front. Um, yeah, it was mine too when I pulled in. I was like, what? So what, we don't know exactly what happened, but it's been here since Friday. We've called the tow truck, and none of us want to touch it because it has been wrecked, just in case you hadn't noticed. There's a bunch of stuff in it. The steering wheel has been torn off and thrown on the ground, so we can't even move it. I looked. <laughs> so... Um, just rest assured, it's not, it's not somebody living in the car. Uh, it will be towed out of here, as well as the little Volkswagen back here. Um, it should be out of here by tomorrow. So just want to set everybody's mind at ease. We know what's going on, and we're taking care of it. Thank you. So I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time to talk about some of the quick announcements we have. So tow truck was number one. Number two, um, I wanted to just, again, bring your attention to the congressional meeting next week, next Sunday. It's going to be after church. We're going to be live as well as uh, Zoom. And this is where we're going to talk about the, the main topic is going to be about the budget. Uh, the other topic was going to be about, as a board, what we came up with was some of our goals. I just want to reiterate that. And, and so out here on the board, um, right by the main office window and doors, there's all of our goals that we came up with as a board. Now we've got four points and there are bullet points under each one. Um, and if you look at that and you see anything on there that you think that you are available or good at, please don't hesitate. Come talk to any member of the board, Pastor Steve, anybody like that. We will definitely encourage you to, to be a part of our growth. So thank you anybody who wants to do that. And speaking of board, or not board, but growth and subjects, we were a little shy on some committee members. Um, and I'll just read quickly. And if you look at this, this is going to be out there on the list on the board as well. So anybody wants to be on a committee, please, 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 come on. Uh, there's going to be, there's two vacancies on the audit. There are two vacancies on the leadership development. Um, and in that one, I would say Steve Sachs should be the person you want to talk to there. The audit committee, uh, Beth Jesse is the chair. We also have an opening on the mission endowment, uh, Dwayne Rhodes, and long range planning. We have a list of five members. We also have a list of five vacancies, so please talk to Pastor Steve, one of the board members. You know, we would love to have you come aboard. And stewardship also has a vacancy of <coughs> five. And there's a list of five people. So there's five vacancies. So please, anybody who would like to join up and help grow this church, perfect. Um, also, as you know, we also talk about uh, our uh, weekend food bags. Well, last weekend, we gave away 26 food bags to Fir Grove and seven to Hunt Elementary. And with that, there's one last item that I need to talk about. Some of you may or may not know. Um, <clears throat> Shannon. Um, <clears throat> Shannon is moving on. She has um, found another opportunity in her life, and she's going to take advantage of it. And... I just want you to know that I wish her well. I'm going to miss her. Uh, a letter will be sent out to everybody this week explaining and outlining everything. So as the president of this board, I, I do tell you that as the board will be working on the transition from Shannon to our next step, whatever that may be. So bear with us. Um, you know, just uh, We just want to thank Shannon for everything that she's done for us in our church and our youth and our, our family directing. It's not easy to see if people go, but we understand that there are other things out there that people need to pursue. When God calls you a place, you got to go or He'll let you know you're going the wrong direction. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to be quiet now and go back in my corner. Thank you, Tony. 
Let's uh, begin this morning with uh, some silent prayer and invite you to uh, enter into this time together uh, as we begin our worship. So uh, time of silence to begin. thanks for this day and this chance to come together again in your name and, and to uh, come to you with prayer and, and singing our praises and, and uh, the chance to hear your word this morning. So we give you thanks. We pray for your presence with us in Jesus name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we begin our worship with our confession and, and hearing the good news of God's forgiveness for our sins. And as you're uh, invited when you come up for communion, um, this is our baptismal promise that we hold on to, so if you wanted to make the sign of the cross in, in uh, remembrance of your baptism and the hope that we have in, in that and in Jesus' name, uh, you're welcome to do so. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. I invite you to join me as together we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. So let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us so that we may walk in your ways, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. By God's grace and mercy, you have eternal life. And so now you are invited to live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. of the day. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm lesson is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber like a champion rejoicing to run its course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Introduction to the reading. The exiles have returned and rebuilt Jerusalem. Now Ezra the priest reads the law of Moses to them in the public square. When they hear it, they weep for their sins and for the long years in exile. But Ezra reminds them that the joy of the Lord is in your strength. The reading is Nehemiah 8, 1 through 12. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the teacher of the law to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. 
Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that people understood what was being read. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people saying, be still, for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. Word of God, word of life. Gospel reading today is from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at verse 14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Any kids want to come sit up front with me? I might have something for you. Now there's a big difference, right? I said I might have something for you. Did I say I promise I have something for you? There's a big difference, right? But if I would have said I promise, would that have made it more enticing? Why? What do you you guys think? Promise is important? Yeah, promises are important. It's a guarantee, okay. What are some things that are promised? Like what? If your mom promises to buy you something? Oh, if your mom sent you to buy something. Okay. And you promise to buy the things that they sent you to go get? Yeah. What other things do get promised? Yeah. You promise to keep a secret safe? Yeah. You promise to do something with someone? You promise to do something with someone? Well, when I was looking up this um, children's message, they said you should show a wedding ring because that is an ultimate promise that you make to somebody, right? You promise to be there for richer, poorer, sickness, and health, right? You make promises. But do we as people always follow through on our promises? Do we always remember everything on the shopping list? Do we always keep those secrets safe? Not always, right? But who is someone who always keeps promises for us? God. God always keeps his promises. And so in today's reading, what Pastor Steve just read, 
we heard that Jesus was in the city of Nazareth. This was his hometown. It's like, it's like Amy coming home from college. She came home, right? It's her home church. So Jesus was at his home church on the Sabbath day, and he did what he always did on Sundays. What did he do? He went to church. And then he stood up, and he began to read the words that we heard in Isaiah from Scripture. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And then he finished talking, and it was kind of maybe not like this where everybody stares up at everybody else, right? It was probably more in community and looking around at each other because everybody looked at Jesus when he sat down. And he looked around and he said, the scripture that you have just heard has been fulfilled this very day. So Jesus looks at them and says, everything you just heard, that's me. God fulfilled the scriptures in me. The end. And that was it. Jesus knew all the promises that God had made, and Jesus knew that he was the fulfillment of that. But God doesn't stop with those promises that he made way back then, right? When we started worship, Pastor Steve said that we were reminded of our baptismal promises. And those are promises that we make to God and God makes to us to continue to be with us, even now today. It's kind of cool, right? Yeah, I think so too. So if there's anything to remember today is what do you think? God keeps his promises. Yeah. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for keeping your promises. We ask that you help us to be faithful in our promises as well. But we thank you so much for your grace that you continue to be with us even when we fall short and fail to keep our promises. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And yes, I do have a treat for you guys. There's chocolate or there's fruity. Chocolate or fruity. Hopefully that comes out in our worship that we are proclaiming God's promises and God is one who keeps promises. So hopefully that's clear in what we do. And our prayer is what uh, Anne introduced with the prelude and what we heard in Psalm 19 that uh, our prayer is that our words and, and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing to God because God is our, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The, uh, I'd like to keep you updated on the Book Tribe's readings. Um, so I do that fairly frequently, but the book we're reading currently, we were introduced to a woman named Frances Perkins, who none of us had, had heard of before. In, uh, I assume you're, you might be the same, um, in 1932, when Franklin Roosevelt was elected president, he appointed her as his uh, Secretary of Labor. And so she was the first woman to ever be a cabinet member in the White House. She had a career in social reform and working for so social justice. And she approached these her whole life with a spirit rooted in democracy and Christianity. So the book we're reading is, is about democracy, as we're all kind of wrestling with these days, but democracy and Christianity. She was simply moved to object to suffering and injustice. And the author goes on to say that vision for action is the clarity of mind that lets you believe you can and you must act, that you can and must act 
and the inspiration of a positive vision. If any idea animated Frances Perkins and her peers, it was, she said, the idea that poverty in the midst of potential plenty is morally unacceptable in a Christian and in a democratic society. So if we believe that, if we believe that being a Christian means that we believe that poverty in the midst of plenty is morally unacceptable, where does Christian come by this belief? And how do we come by the clarity of mind that lets us believe that we can and we must act? Where do we get the inspiration for a positive vision? Another person that we were introduced to, which we also had never heard of, was a man called Bayard Rustin. He was posthumously awarded the Medal of Freedom by President Obama in 2013, if I did my math correctly. He was a civil rights activist who worked with Martin Luther King Jr. He, his mentor was uh, A. Philip Randolph. You guessed it, hadn't heard of him either. Um, but both Rustin and Randolph were standing with Martin Luther King Jr. when he gave his I Have a Dream speech at Washington, D.C. And then after the, after the march was over, Rustin went to congratulate Randolph. And the author tells us, the greatest moment of my life was when I saw tears roll down the face of A. Philip Randolph, he later said. To me, he was the giant. And to see this giant with tears in his eyes moved me to want to do everything I humanly could to bring about justice, not only for black people, but for whoever is in trouble. What moves us to tears? What would a Christian want what would move a Christian to want to work for justice for those who are in trouble? In the prayer of the day, we prayed this morning, we prayed, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, mark, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them so that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold Hold fast to the hope of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And does our hope for eternal life, does that extend beyond ourselves and to our neighbor? Especially our neighbors who are in trouble. Is eternal life a shared hope for the community? We might think we might need to think of eternal life from a new perspective. And how do we gain a new perspective? Where do we get the inspiration of a positive vision? In our, our reading in Nehemiah this morning, the scribe Ezra stood up before the gathered people in Jerusalem and he read the book of the law of Moses to them. As they listened to scripture being read, the people were moved to tears. The Ten Commandments and the rest of the Law of Moses is about living together in community. Nehemiah said to the people, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Then all the people went away to eat and drink and they also sent portions of food to those who had nothing prepared. They celebrated with great joy because now they understood the words that had been made known to them. Now they understood the words of Scripture. They gained a new perspective, maybe even a clarity of mind that led them to act, not only for themselves, but for their neighbor as well. All of this happened in the context of renewal and restoration. The people had come back from exile in Babylon. They were rebuilding the city of Jerusalem. They were rebuilding this, the temple that's at its center. And into this renewal, the scribes read scripture and interpreted for the people who were eager to hear the word. God's word is at the center of this renewal, which encompasses the whole community and sends some to those who have nothing prepared. No one is left out of this renewal and this rejoicing. No one falls through the cracks. And then we heard in the, in the gospel reading today in Luke, Jesus went home to Nazareth 
And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as Shannon pointed out, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then sitting down, he, he uh, began to explain the meaning of what he had read. He began by saying, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So it sounds like that was the custom, that someone would stand up to read, they would be given the scripture to read, and then after they read, they would sit down, and then they would explain to the congregation what they had read. So today we heard this the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing, and that'll pick up next week with Jesus explaining what he has read to us. What does that mean to us? So we get to hear that next week. So be sure to come back. Be sure to make your custom uh, coming back again next week. And we'll hear what Jesus has to say. But he starts, or he will begin next week. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, right now, in your hearing. And it, is it the same for us? We have scripture as the center of our worship. Does the same thing happen among us? We pray that it does, that we, we are renewed and refreshed as we hear God's word read. Each week we come, and, and like I said, scripture reading is the center for us. This is, we expect something to happen. We anticipate that something will happen in our hearing. And that hearing is centered in a newness, just like the people in Jerusalem listening to Ezra the scribe. A, a sense of renewal for us. Our understanding of scripture informs the life that we adopt when we leave here. What life will we live? And it's informed by what we've heard this morning. We are changed by what we have heard. And as we understand scripture, as it deepens and helps us to grow, then we are changed. As we read and hear scripture, it creates in us an awareness, an awareness that is not our own. It comes from the scripture that we hear. It comes, we begin to see our community and our neighbors through Jesus' eyes and not our own. The reading of scripture and, and our hearing of it creates in us an openness that, again, we anticipate and we expect something to happen, that we will be changed, we will be renewed and our lives will be transformed. So I asked at the beginning, how do we come by this clarity of mind that lets us believe we can and we must act? Where do we get the inspiration of a positive vision, especially when the vision of everyone around us seems to be negative? Our concern for our neighbor, particularly those who suffer, is not separate and distinct from our faith in our worship here together, especially as we hear scripture read. Our hearing scripture read informs what we think about community and about justice. This new thing that is created in us comes from our hearing of scripture. In the context of the renewal of community life, Nehemiah tells us to celebrate the newness of God and to think of others. And in the gospel, Jesus proclaims hope for the future especially for those who need hope, who need that good news. He is proclaiming the coming kingdom of God where all things will be made new, where there will be no more crying and no more pain. Jesus says this word of hope from the prophet Isaiah has been fulfilled today in your hearing, in the word made flesh. This is the good news that we come to worship and we hear each week. And as the weeks pile up one on the top of another, then we are changed, we are renewed by the scripture that we hear. Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing and in me, Jesus says. And next week Jesus will tell us what this means for us so that we too will come to understand the words that have been made known to us. Let us pray.
Lord, we pray that as we hear your word today and, and each week, that we will be changed, that we will be renewed, that we will be newly aware to see through your eyes, that we will be open to what you are doing among us. And give us confidence that as your word creates in us what is new, that our words and our patience and our heart will be pleasing in your sight. And you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please stand. prayers. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church and for the world and for all that God has made. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you reveal yourself to us in the reading of Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your good news of justice to all people. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and the beautiful creation you have given us as our home. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species at risk of extinction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You, Lord, are the Prince of Peace, and you lead us in the ways of peace where we are divided in our society and nation and world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Remove conflict from among us, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided abundantly in a moment of need, provide abundant gifts of healing for those in need this day. We continue to pray for Chuck and Carol for Mike Deal, for Julie and Chris, for Debbie Mervick. And now you are invited to offer your own petitions, either out loud or silently in your hearts. For Susie, for Mary's sister with COVID.
Lord provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, for all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints from whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn. We pray especially for Frank and Jason and Courtney and their family at at, uh, the death of Penny this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of gifts in this congregation. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And since we do have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you always. The Lord be with you. Still also with me. We've got to fix that, I think. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned into wine, he revealed your glory. And so, and so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are invited to come to God's table and know as you come there is a place for you and there is plenty enough for all. So please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thanks, gracious God, for we ha have feasted on the abundance of your table. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
you for coming today and wonderful to worship together. Now go in God's peace and rejoice in Jesus Christ, our Savior.